Hello viewers, in this video, we are going to discuss on combinational logic circuits. Digital circuits are divided into two types. One is combinational logic circuits and we have sequential logic circuits. In combinational logic circuits, the output at any instant of time depends upon the inputs present at that instant of time. Combinational circuits don't have memory elements. For example, in an error circuit, the output at any instant of time depend upon the out input data present at that instant of time only. Whereas in sequential circuits, the outputs depend upon the present inputs as well as the past inputs and outputs. Sequential circuits have memory elements. For example, in a counter, the output at any instant depends on the previous output of the circuit. Let us discuss the basic steps to design a combinational circuits. The first step is to find out how many inputs and outputs are there in the system. This can be find out from the setup state means boolean expression or truth table. For example, to design a 2-bit error circuit, to tell 4 number of inputs will be required because for each of the input number, there will be 2 bit. The next step is to convert the truth table into a KMF and simplify it. And the final step is to implement the simplified expression using logic gates. Now as an example, let us try to design a single bit comparator. The first step of the design is to determine the number of inputs and outputs. So let us first draw a box which represents a single bit comparator. A single bit comparator is a digital circuit which compares two single bit data. So it is obvious that there must be two input. So let us name this A and B. So A is a single bit and B is also single bit. Now since this is a comparator circuit, so this circuit must be able to tell us whether A is greater than B or B is greater than A or A is equal to B. So that is why these circuits need three outputs which can indicate whether A is greater than B, A is equal to B or A is less than B. So that is why these circuits will have total two inputs and total three outputs. Now let us try to represent this single bit comparator in a truth table. So here all the inputs and outputs are represented like this. And all the possible combinations of the inputs are also given here. Now, for the first case, that is when we apply a equal to 0 and b equal to 0, in that case, this is the valid condition. That means a equal to b in this case. So that is why here the output should be equal to 0, here the output should be equal to 1, and here the output should be equal to 0. Second case, when a is equal to 0, b is equal to 0, that means b is greater than a. So this is the valid condition. So here this output should be equal to 0, this output should be equal to 0 and this output should be equal to 1. Similarly for the third case, here a is greater than b. So here this output should be equal to 1 and this is not valid so 0 and this is also not valid so 0. In the last condition here this would be equal to 0 and this is the valid statement. So this is equal to 1 and this is also equal to 0. So this is the truth table representation of this statement. The next step is to convert this truth table into a KMF. So here we can see these are the inputs and these are the outputs. So here we will represent each column of the outputs in terms of the inputs in a KMF. So let us represent the first column that is this column in terms of the inputs in a KMF like this. So this is the KMF representation of this column in terms of this input. So here we have only one term in this KMF. So you can easily write the expression for this column. 
so this is the final expression for this column similarly we can represent the next column of output using this inputs in a kmf like this so here we have two terms so this is the expression for this column and finally we have this column so this is the expression now the final step the final step we have to implement this logical expression by using logic get so here you can see this is the box for a single bit comparator and these are the inputs these are the outputs we will have some more interesting examples in the next part of combinational circuits thank you very much for watching